Hello, I'm Mark Pikert, Editor-in-Chief of The Gay Goods, and you were tuned in to today's episode of The Gay Goodies, as I promised last week, featuring Isaac X. That's right, the guy who brought us Alpha Wolf to gay porn is now here to sit with me to talk about tattoos, to talk about filming, to talk about the vibes, and to wonder with me, what is the deal with Chris Damned? We don't know. We're going to figure it out today, though. <laughs> Isaac X. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm so excited to sit with you today because you are someone uh, that certainly Chris has mentioned a lot. And I feel as if over the last few months, you've popped up everywhere. I just see you in a teeny tiny Speedo with your t arm tattoos, just in Lucas Productions, just on Instagram, everywhere. You're everywhere. I'm trying. And even today, I mean, you've got everything out and everywhere. You know how and that's what it. we like to see. You know how we do it. <laughs> How's it going? So, please, I'm delighted to have you. And what's hilarious is you were so in demand that you were literally on a plane earlier today when we were initially scheduled to do the interview. I was. But I made it. I I've... I am. You're here? I mean, you just got off an airplane. You're I, practically at uh, the airport right now. It's basically the back of a lift with a green screen because you always travel prepared. You know how we do it. I fucking even took like one of those black cars to rush home. It was really good though. I also wasn't going to wait like well, I mean, for a lift because lift is like so impossible to, you know, it's hard to get a car right now with co like there's not as many drivers, but. So you just gotta like pay a little more and it's worth it to get picked up right away. See, but this is where I really wanna set up some apps where porn stars and sex workers can connect with fans. Because if you think a fan wouldn't pick you up at the airport and drive you wherever you needed to go for free. For free, I guess I would tip them at least. Unless they wanted to do it for free, then I would just let them for sure. It's yeah, and I feel like they would. Or the tip could just be like, reach into your luggage, pull out a pair of socks, throw them at the driver, peace a out. A lot of people would love that, actually. I, I think we've got a real idea here. Yeah, I think that's smart. I think we should start it. We should start a company. But you were someone, I feel like there are a handful of you guys, and you all hang out together all the time, and you've all been gracious enough to sit with me recently. Mm -hmm. But you and Bo Butler and Chris Damned and Alpha Wolf and a handful of others are suddenly everywhere, and you're fairly new to the industry. Yeah, I love Bo Butler. I was actually just with him two nights ago. He's my he's my, probably like one of my closest friends in this industry. He's amazing. I love Chris Damned. I love Alpha Wolf. Um, I hang out with August Alexander a lot, and my, probably, like, my number one ride or die, like, takes precedence over any person kind of in this industry is um, Marco Napoli. I don't know if you know him, but he is, um, he's, like, my mentor and my right-hand dude. Um, but we also go back in history, like, 10 years, so we've been buddies since before porn, and, like, um, he was a big reason that, like, a, a big reason why I decided to do adult film, you know? So, so what, I mean, what led to you starting professionally in porn? So I'll be super honest. Um, yes. Like I, <laughs> I've been in the sex industry on and off since I was 18, not filming porn, but escorting and doing erotic massage and all of that stuff. But um and then I would take breaks from that because I would get in these kind of like serious monogamous relationships that never work out. Um, and so I would do different jobs and maybe explore different career paths um, and stay away from the escorting. But when I left L.A., I was in West Hollywood for six years and I moved to San Diego two years ago. Before I came to San Diego, there was like six months where I was I was escorting again. And when I got to San Diego, I realized um, I'm just going to do this full time because I'm making a lot of money and um, this is what I want to do. 
And as I started to pursue seeing clients full time, um, I started meeting other people that were porn stars that were seeing clients too. And I noticed that these guys were um, seeing less clients, making more money, having more fun. And I, like the seed was planted in the back of my head. I just felt like, is this something that I really maybe want to try just for not because not for the fame, not for the, not to actually be on the films. For me, it was like marketing and advertising. Like if these people can see me on the internet, they're going to fucking hire me. So yes. Yeah. So that was the main, that was the mindset getting into this. I was super scared. I took time to really think about it. I'm an impulsive person. So normally my decisions are made like at the drop of a hat, but Mm -hmm. this one, I decided to really sit on it and think about it. And um, so between Marco Napoli and Nick Capra, Nick Capra is one of my neighbors. He actually, we met at the gym and we discovered we were kind of doing, we were walking the same path in a lot of ways. He's the person who sat me down at a coffee shop and started my OnlyFans and my Just For Fans. So I thought to myself, I'm just going to do OnlyFans and Just For Fans. But quickly within like just a couple months of doing OnlyFans, I decided to do my first studio gig. And um, it was kind of like this small, this really like slow escalation. And then bam, like next thing you know, I'm, you know, in all these movies and (laughs) filming a ton and loving it. So... That's how I got into porn. I I swear you've mentioned like two major porn stars who live near you. And now I'm picturing San Diego as like the Olympic village, but for gay porn stars. That's West Hollywood, but like San Diego. Where you just all. (laughs) Yeah, West Hollywood is like porn star saturation in one fucking, well, it's like like a gun like that. But um, San Diego has some like, we have some freaking amazing like all-star performers here. Like we all know Nick Capra's a legend. He he wears the crown. So um, Austin Wilde's here. I have yet to meet him, but he's here. Um, there's a few other big names. Andy Taylor. Yeah. So it's cool. So what was your first studio porn? I did a scene with Cutler's Den and... Um, yeah, it was the best way to start because they they make really like I I think that their studio makes like pretty great porn, um, but it's just easy to shoot. It's not a long set day. You're literally done in like an hour and a half. Um, but yeah, there's just one guy in the room, Jeff. He's incredible to work with. He's a great director. So it kind of like I don't know. It took. I was nervous for sure, but it was. It was easy. And when was this? How recently was this? July 2020. Wow. So a pandemic hits and you're like, you know what? Now or never. Only fans. But um, I just had an opportunity to do studio. Plus, during pandemic, the studio stuff was like the safer route to go. If you're like really... Because, you know, we, of course, the United States doesn't love to support its people financially during a global pandemic. So you still have to work. But um, <laughs> but the studios like, you know, we're like proactive on COVID testing and quarantine. And like, so it was the safer option to make money, you know. So having having actually given thought and time to making this career decision, has it affected your life in ways that you anticipated or has it been a completely different experience than what you had thought going in? It's been a completely different experience than what I thought going in. Yep. Because when I decided to do porn, I had a lot of people um, in my ear telling me um, some people that were loving it 
and I kind of trusted those people. And then I had, I had a handful of guys that, um, were talking shit about the industry, making it seem like it was going to be this big nightmare. Um, you know, I had some like, no offense to them, but like some people that were burnt out in the industry, giving me their feedback, which isn't always great when you have a, it's just as similar as like the server at a restaurant who put in there two weeks and they're like burnt out and they're just like, <laughs> fuck this. <laughs> so I had a lot of burnouts and negative crap in my ear, basically saying that it was going to be this like shit experience. And to be honest with you, it's been the best thing I've ever done. Like for me, it was liberating. For me, it was life changing. For me, it literally put like a family of like the coolest fucking people, men and women in my life. It, um, like I feel safest in my porn community for sure. Like those people are my family. It's, it's legit. You get a sense of that from social media. All of you are so supportive of one another and, uh, gassing each other up on Twitter and, working together and like shooting OnlyFans content together and introducing new people to one another. And it's really uh, touching in a way that I don't think most people would associate with the porn world, but it's great to see all of the younger guys just starting out being like, no, we don't have to be competitive and we don't have to be divas about this. We're all, the more we work, the more work there is. Yeah, and people are nice and like, I don't know, I, I was kind of given this maybe thought that going on set for a film was going to be this nightmare and that people were going to be terrible and everybody's so chill. So ch yeah, the days can be long and those can be tough for sure. Like if you have a shoot that goes on past six hours and you're just kind of like, okay, can we wrap? But the directors are nice. The, the crew is fun. Like, the models are usually, in my experience, have been great. So, yeah. Well, I feel like for the majority of gay porn, the days are too long to deal with dicks. And so if you're going to be a model who is too much trouble, then you're not going to be worth it and no one will hire you. Mm -hmm. For sure, yeah. Uh, now, that being said, there are some studios that deal ex exclusively in nonsense and drama, but I'm not having any of them on my show. Right. We know the vibes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, life is too short. I don't want that. I just escaped Broadway. I don't need to deal with cunts anymore. Yeah, I'm done with the cunts, you know? But no, I really have been having a fucking blast. And um, and yeah, I'm, I'm like barely seeing clients now. I do for sure, but like... Porn and OnlyFans have just been my, has been my career now. So it's been great. I prefer, I'm so what do you studio over OnlyFans though. No, yeah. because you like to, you like to do a hard day's work and walk out the door with an envelope of cash. I like the check, of course. And like, I've, I make decent money on OnlyFans too. So I've been paying more attention to my OnlyFans, but I don't know. The studio, the studio girls are fun to work with. I feel like there's a level of like professionalism that's, you know, um, there. <laughs> um, I don't know. They more exciting for me than like. I mean, I have great sex on OnlyFans. Let's be real. I've had some great times on OnlyFans, but I prefer the studio porn experience over the set up a fucking tripod and go at it. You know. <laughs> So, but I love that. When too. you're doing, I'm not going to knock OnlyFans. I love OnlyFans. I love doing OnlyFans. I've met great people because of OnlyFans. When you do studio, what is a harder day for you when you're topping or when you're bottoming? Um, I'm not going to say I've had hard days in both positions. So it depends. Like a harder day for me is if, like, if I drank too much Red Bull and I haven't eaten enough food <laughs> and like, um, it's just dragging on and on, you know? And, um, and I just am like, fuck. And my dick might hurt cause I did Trimix. Um, you know, and that's when I start getting like, all right, can we just fucking come? But like those days are kind of few and far between. Yeah. 
You know how much Red Bull your body can handle. Sometimes I just fucking overshoot the mark, and then it all just hits me, and then it's like the end of the day, and I'm like, fuck, I'm a little bit... No one can tell, though. There's been times when I've been like, I'm sorry if I wasn't there. Like, what are you talking about? Well, that's what makes you a professional. I try. At the end of a bottoming day, once you have finished shooting and you finally get to eat, what is your go-to meal? Well, this is the thing, is that I'm one of those people who, if I get up in the morning and I douche for two hours and I take two to four Imodium, mm -hmm. I can eat during my set day. So I do eat too, because I, I'm the type of person, I lift a lot of heavy weights and I, my metabolism is really fast. So it's better if I do eat. And because of Imodium and because of like, if you can douche right, you, I douche like for a studio set, like as if I'm about to get fisted and I don't get fisted, but um, I'm good to eat. But like last night, let's see, I didn't bottom yesterday, but I didn't really eat yesterday either because oh. there's not really time for that. So what I did after, and I eat really clean, so I kind of feel like trash today and I kind of felt like trash last night. But because of a long film day yesterday, actually yesterday wasn't too bad. For like a decent day of work and not enough food, I went to, I was in Vegas. I went with a few other performers to this like burger place. I got a chocolate shake, which was fire. I had French fries. I had an Impossible Burger because I don't eat meat. And then we walked for like a couple miles, like just around the strip. And when I got back to my hotel, I may or may not have had <laughs> peanut M&Ms and Starburst. It was a lot, dude. Like, what the fuck was I thinking? But whatever. I'm picturing you opening one Starburst and eating it and going, Isaac, that's all you can have. One. Fat bitch. One. Fat fucking cunt. No. I, um, actually, no. I destroyed the pack and like... <laughs> I'm extreme. When I do something, I do it. Like, cool, we're having sugar tonight. Let's get sick as fuck until we have to throw up. I didn't throw up. Yeah. But I was like, should I do this right now? But I didn't. You know what? But you were in Vegas, and what happens in Vegas stays there. What happens in Vegas, everyone finds out about on the internet in about two to three months. Yeah, that's very true as well. Because right. it's all on camera. Because <laughs> the whole thing is recorded. Uh, who have you really enjoyed filming with? I mean... Is it a situation where you can hang out with like Chris or Bo and then still have fire chemistry on set? Or yeah. when you get to know people, does that, does that adjust things? Mm, I think, I think with sex work and porn, I, I rarely, actually I'm going to say never now, like back in maybe my early twenties, I'm about to be 32. There were those situations when you'd have that one random hookup and then shit got fucking weird after and then you see them in public and it's weird. I don't have weird shit anymore because sex has become such a normal thing to do and like a lot of that yeah. like shame and stigma I had around sex in my early 20s has completely disappeared and porn has also alleviated a lot of that crap. Um, like I can fuck my, if I fuck my, I fuck my friends all the time and it's, they're just my friend, you know, and we can have great fucking sex, but then also just be like a buddy and not have it be strange. So usually it's okay. Maybe if I've had like conflict with another person, I might not want to like, which I don't really have conflict with a lot of people, but if there, if there is some type of like, oh, maybe we don't jive that well, I can yeah. still with that person I still could um, but I might not mentally enjoy it as much as it looks like I am you know but I, I haven't really been in that situation a ton um, like who do I love filming with I love filming with Chris Damned him and I have great chemistry on set we made a great video for Raging Stallion our duo was fucking hot Bo Butler obviously amazing um we all love Bo. He's incredible. Uh, I just like having sex with him, period. And he's also, like, my best friend. So, one of my best friends. 
Um, who else have I really loved filming with? Ooh, I did a really great three-way with Gabriel Phoenix and Sir Peter. Gabriel lives in the UK and Sir Peter lives in Madrid, in Spain. Um, those are like my close friends too. We talk, we don't miss a day without conversation. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. Um, and also Valentin is a good friend of mine too. We haven't done a scene, but like the four of us are in a group chat and we're constantly talking. Um, but the, that three way was like, I mean, they fucking destroyed me for sure. Cause I don't know if you've seen Sir Peter. It's like, it's a, the yeah, biggest, girl. and him and Gabriel were just so like physical with me and I can take a beating. So I just, I mean, I, my mouth was bleeding, but I loved that scene. Uh, and that was for Lucas, right? Yeah. That movie was great. Um, God, there's so, I, there's so many people that I've worked with that I just like, I could speak high volumes to. I did another three-way on that production with um, Jimmy Fit, who's a good friend of mine, and Manuel Sky, because I was a full-time yoga teacher in the past, and they're like acrobats. So we did this really cool fucking like, um, like, yoga movement acro like backflips and shit type of scene and then fucking in the most insane back bends and positions that you would never do in real life. I mean, I was so sore the next day, but it was really cool. I can't wait for that one to come out. Um, and of course, so how did you No, sorry. Uh, how did you, what was the trajectory of full-time yoga teacher and were you escorting on the side or that when I was full-time yoga teacher, I wasn't escorting then. Cause I was in a relationship, I was in a committed relationship. <sighs> He's cool. We though. know how those go. That relationship was worth it. That relationship was worth it. It didn't end very pretty, but like him and I are on good terms today. And like for the 99% of the time that we were together, minus that last few months, it was it was a good relationship, and he's a dope dude. I have nothing bad to say about him. But would I be in a monog monogamous relationship again? Fuck no. Well, I'm curious. You talked about having some stigma around sex in your early 20s. Mm -hmm. uh, how did that play into becoming an escort? Did Had you worked through that at that point, or did escorting help you get over some of the stigma? I think I was just escorting the wrong way in my early 20s because I was young and fucking dumb and taking... <laughs> <laughs> idiot so that's why it was like you know i wasn't feeling great about the situations i was putting myself in and leaving and you know but that's yeah. why when i got a little older i was like all right there's a way to do this where i can like keep my dignity and my boundaries intact and like and have support around it and leave feeling just fine you know not feeling like shit like yeah having it be like a higher price point with higher quality clients. So, yeah. Well, I think it's so interesting that, um, and I know we keep talking about the same circle of your friends, but you and Chris Damned and Bo Butler are all getting into studio porn a little bit later than one would normally think of porn stars getting involved. I mean, you're all in your early thirties. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I remember when I first, when I decided to do studio, I was on a FaceTime with Shishi LaRue, who I just did a scene, I just, she just directed my scene yesterday. I remember her saying to me, um, how old are you again? Because her and I have actually known each other since I was 23, and so almost a decade. And she was like, this is the perfect time because people are like, kind of wanting to see more of like men in their 30s than like the, I mean, everyone, it's not my type, but like, you know, there's still a huge market for twinks and like the fucking kid that looks like, are they even 18? Whatever. Yeah. Uh, but like, I think a lot, I think I was told at least by she, she, she was like, there's, there's, you know, a big market right now for dudes that are in their thirties, late thirties, early forties. So yeah. And those are the kind of guys, those, that's kind of the age group of dudes I'm into. Oh, absolutely. I've, I mean, since I was 18, that's the age group of guys that I've been into. Yeah. When you're working with like a she, she, what is the direction like that she's giving you? She was fucking badass to work with yesterday. Um, 
she was so loving and kind and supportive. And when we were like doing great, she would like pull us aside and be like, this is fucking awesome. You guys are killing it. Like, yes, this is so hot. She would just be like, she let us, I filmed with Jake Waters yesterday. He was fucking rad. Great, great fucking bottom performer. Loved him, period. Um, she would just like kind of let us do our thing because we were doing great. But then she would add like a fl- if she could see that I was like fucking him in missionary in a way where like because he has like a decent sized dick. If it seems like it could, I could possibly have leaned forward and sucked it. She would just be like, Isaac, suck his dick while you're fucking him. Like, I'm like, OK, doing that. And, like, lean back a little further. Do it like that, you know? Like, very... Yeah. She, her direction was minimal. It wasn't 24-7, like... She kind of just... We we blocked the scene, meaning we knew what positions we were going to do. But she would just help us, like, take it to the next... Like, oh, maybe if I fuck him, like, a little more on this angle or, you know... Um, have him ride me with me leaning back and then leaning forward. So, yeah. Well, she she has been in this industry long enough to know, she, to, to recognize someone who knows what the fuck he's doing. She's the queen. Oh, thank you. And that's you. You're, thank yeah, it was a compliment. You're... Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> sure. Well, I, I've loved seeing your career so far, and I cannot wait to see now that the pandemic is almost over and vaccinations are happening and studio is coming back full force. You're going to fucking destroy 2021. You know, I think I am too. <laughs> <laughs> That's my plan. And like so far it's gone well, but as soon as stuff started like opening up more, things were a little crazy over the last two months. I was busy, bitch. Yeah. I was booked and busy. And so the last couple weeks, like between um, between my kink shoots a couple weeks ago and my Falcon scene, it was nice to be fucking home and like not filming for a minute because my I was kind of seeing double for a second. I mean, you are booked like... Well, like uh, Deborah Vance, played by Jean Smart on Hacks. Like, you do not have any downtime. You are on a plane doing, uh, setting up a rescheduled interview with me. You're the best for doing that. Oh, I left uh, important out, actually, that I just want to mention really quick. So I, I actually, like, identify more as pansexual. And um, I just did my first straight scene with my best girlfriend in the industry, Mackenzie Lee. And so I'm really fucking excited for that scene to come out because she pegged me with a giant fucking, I think it was purple dildo. Was it purple or pink? Oh. She pegged me with a purple or pink dildo. It was a big ash long and then I fucked her and it was great. So I'm really excited well, for that. Like, you are leaving no, no hole empty. You know how we do it. Yeah, so I'm really fucking stoked as to to be that and to have Twitter um you know about it. But she's I mean I'm telling you. Lee is a legend. She's a female fucking porn legend. Yeah. She's amazing. Well and future legend in the making, Isaac X, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Isaac, for joining me. And thank all of you for watching. Tune in next week for another episode.